So I have to let everyone know that we are now live streaming the workshop. So the workshops can be found on YouTube after the workshop, or even if every week we have a workshop, if you don't want to come down, you can see it on YouTube going forward. Um, so basically the cameras are in the back and it's basically just video um, streaming the speaker. So we, we probably, because you all are so far back, nobody can actually see you. So we will be asking you to hold your questions to the end. So if there's something that Alta says that you want to ask about, if you could write your question down and ask it at the end, she's going to repeat the question so that she can say it in the microphone so that they can hear it on YouTube. So she'll repeat your question and then answer your question. Um, you should have picked up all the handouts out there. There's an evaluation that I will collect at the end. Um, the DPS alert cards, the most recent bid opportunity list, and the buying plan. We do recommend, does everybody get DPS alerts right now? Do you get DPS alerts? Okay. We do recommend that people sign up for DPS alerts because we send out the bid opportunity list every Monday. And then the buying plan is like a forecast of what's coming out. So we will, we do that quarterly. So it should be another buying plan coming out by mid-October with new updated information. Um, so we do send that out as well in the um, DPS alerts that come out. We have events that come up, so all that stuff comes out. So we try to keep everybody up to date on what's going on in, in the department. And Alta, if you didn't, I think she gave everybody her handout. It's an actual RFP. It's an example of one, and I'm pretty sure she's going to try to go over that um, during her presentation. So I think that's everything. They are, we do have on that rack out there the um, workshop schedule for the entire year. So if you want to see what's coming up, there's almost a workshop for everything. So how to, um, how to find things, how to navigate the DPS website, how to do a certification application, how to do business, information about bonding. So any workshop that you can think of we're probably doing and if we haven't thought of it it's on that evaluation so you can write it down so that we can try to figure out if we need to do that workshop as well so i'm victoria wright i'm the marketing and outreach coordinator and alta riley is a contract negotiator okay <laughs> so i'm gonna turn it over to alta and she's gonna host this workshop Technology is moving forward. We got to go with the flow. <laughs> I hope it's okay. Is it? All right. All right. So my name is Altha Riley, and I am with the Department of Procurement Services, and um, I work in the Professional Services Unit. So before we get started, we actually have a smaller crowd here today. Um, why don't we just ask your name, maybe the company you represent, not an infomercial, just maybe your name, company you represent, uh, just so I'll know who you are, you know, and we'll go from there, and then I'll get into the presentation. So, ma'am, we'll start with you. Okay. All right, so you guys should have picked up a couple things off the table, but what we're going to talk about is how to respond to a request for a proposal, all right? And then um, you should have also picked up an actual copy of a proposal, okay? So this is gonna be like our main document that we're gonna go over, just to give you a live example as we go through, um, when we talk about an RFP, what it actually is so you'll know, okay? So, again, I'm Alta Riley. I'm with the Department of Procurement, and I'm, I work 
specifically in professional services. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about, we'll follow the spreadsheet a little bit, but I uh, probably more so all over the place just to make sure I give you as much information as possible. All right, so tips for finding bid opportunities with the city of Chicago. So Victoria kind of talked about this, um, but we have uh, DPS alerts. So I would strongly advise that if you have not signed up, that you do so. And what they'll do is send you these weekly, I think we have one on the table. They'll send this out to you weekly, okay? So that you'll have this um, of what the current bid opportunities are for the week. I also would strongly advise that you pick up a copy of the buying plan, okay? So this buying plan actually um, has some opportunities for other municipalities as well. So again, this is on the table. I think this includes Chicago Board of Education, City Colleges, Chicago Housing Authority, which is really unique, okay? So I'm not sure if they'll continue to this, but generally you'll have to go to those organizations to find out what their system is. But this one seems to be comprehensive, which is great. Okay, so, you know, this one, again, the uh, DPS alerts is weekly, okay? But let's say you want to know if, you know, the city is planning on buying something within the next four or five months, whereas to, this would only give you a window into a week, this one kind of forecasts it out, okay? So this is an excellent, excellent resource for you, okay? All right. Pre-bid attendee conferences, okay? So again, on this weekly alert, what you're going to see on here is when we generally issue an RFP, we have pre-proposal conferences, which are similar to kind of what we're doing now. We'll go over this, the spec, we'll allow you to ask questions, but this will identify when the actual pre-bid conference is. It's kind of small, but okay, so this one, if we looked at this one, there's one October 6th at 4 o'clock for this professional consulting services for roof inspection and roof construction. Okay, it actually mentions target market on here. Okay, so these are when the actual pre proposal conferences are. Okay, um, give, gives you a good opportunity to net, network as well. Okay, um, take out the bid, take out list, and basically that list includes um, the parties that showed up to the pre-proposal conference. So let's say that, you know, you're not ready to necessarily start as a prime contractor. You're more interested in being a subcontractor. Um, a, you can attend the pre-proposal conferences to network, but secondly, you'll get a list of everyone who attended the uh, pre-proposal conference, and that'll let you know, you know, who you can market to or call. Um, the bid takeout list also in this room, they capture who takes out copies of each bid as well. So um, that's a great tool for you as well. All right. So the use of an RFP versus a competitive bid. Okay. So we have different types of procurement methods. Okay. And what I'm going to talk about here today is a request for proposal, okay? So let me just try to distinguish the two, all right? In a request for proposal, uh, it's a method of procurement to hire professional services consultant to implement a new project in various professional service disciplines, and it's very project specific. When you talk about a competitive bid, you're talking about things like widgets supplies, equipment, maintenance, repair, constructions. Those are generally done on a competitive bid nature, okay? So for the competitive bid, they're gonna do a detailed spec and price and quantities are looked at, okay? For RFP, we're looking at a lot of different components, okay? It's not just based on price and quantity. Okay, and we'll get into all the things we look at for an RFP, but that's just to give you a very general overview, okay, of the differences between the two. And you probably can do, 
a presentation on competitive bids just alone, okay, of the different types of procurement method that we have. But again, this is going to be just for a request for a proposal, okay? So, all right. All right, so let's actually just go through this RFP, okay? All right, so again, you should have this in your hand, okay? So this will, we, we have a couple of ways for you to download, for, to obtain this. You can obtain it on our website, and if you download it and print it, we would ask that you give your business card and you let them know that you have a copy. Otherwise, you can come to this room and get a copy. Okay, so when they, let's say you see something on here that you like and you want a copy. So again, those are the methods in which you can get it, okay? So now you got a copy in your hand, you're excited. This is great, you could wait to get this. Okay, so let's go over it, okay. So this is a request for a proposal for health management systems, okay? So I want you to take note of a couple things, all right? Specification number. Okay, this is the unique number to this specification. Okay, so all of our stuff is going to have a specification number. Now, before I go further, I want to tell you that we talk, I talked a little bit earlier about the county and all of them doing their own procurements. The way that they do their procurements may be totally different from what we do, okay? So they may not call this a spec, they may call it something else. Their RFPs may be a little different. So we're only talking about the city of Chicago, okay? So just, it's very important. They may have their own procurement website. Some of the terms may be the same, but this is only as it relates to us, okay? So again, you have the spec number. Very important, you send emails, all of that. Make sure you reference the spec number, okay? Now, City of Chicago Department of Innovation and Technology. We have lots of departments. And I, I wish I could say I knew the exact number at this moment because it changes. I think there's 30 something this time, okay? So what happens is the departments will requisition us. So they'll come to us and say, we have a need for a service, okay? And they work with us to put this document together to work with you on this procurement, okay? So that's why it says Department of Innovation and Technology. It could say Department of Fleet and Facility Management. It could say Department of Revenue, whatever department. It also could say multiple departments, okay? But this is just to let you know who we worked with to put the solicitation together. So again, in procurement, we do not initiate services. A service department comes to us with a need, and we work with them to put this document together, all right? So the Chief Procurement Officer is Jamie Ree. And the, another thing to take note of is the person's name who will be handling this in procurement, okay? So the person who handled this is Joseph Chan, okay? He's a Senior Procurement Specialist. You have his email address, you have his phone number, okay? So this is very important information for you to know. So if you have questions about that particular um, RFP, contact the person that's on this particular sheet, okay? And then it tells you that this pre-proposal conference will be held and it gives you the date, lets you know exactly where that the attendance is not mandatory but encouraged, okay? And then it lets you know when proposals are due, all right? All right, so let's go, now you have a table of contents. And again, it just generally outlines some of the documents in the RFP. The purpose, uh, the description, the term, general information, preparing proposals, evaluating proposals, selection process, and then additional details of the RFP. All right, and then it'll list all the exhibits. All right, scope, costs, these are all the exhibits. Insurance, all right. All right, so the first one is the general invitation. Okay, so the city of Chicago acting through the Department of Innovation and Technology gives you a brief background about this procurement. 
Okay. What is, what is this procurement about? Why are we doing this? Why are we issuing this procurement? Okay. All right. Internet access to the RFP. We're on page 2, section 1.2. All right, again, this kind of goes back to what I said about if you download it, make sure you let the bid and bond room know so that they'll know you have a copy of it, okay? Because what will happen is uh, we issue what are known as addendums, okay? So you want to be on the list because if we don't know you have it, we will post it on our website, but it's nothing like having it sent to you, okay? So that's just a piece of information for you. Scope of services. All right, so we talk about description of services. All right, so the description of services is in our Exhibit 1, which we'll generally go over. Term of contract. So it looks like the base period for this is five years with two one-year options. So let me tell you what that means. If you provide these services, this potentially means that this service could be potentially off-limits for another procurement or another RFP for seven years, okay? That's a long time, okay? If you've been waiting a while to um, provide your services to the city and they put out an RFP for you to get proposals and you evaluate and they award a contract to somebody for five years and then they have the option to renew, that means for seven years it could be say locked out but um, where you'll be looking to say you know when are you going to put this back out so I definitely encourage you to uh, take note of it and sign up for the DPS alerts and all of that because sometimes it's even longer than this very very important all right so let's go on all right so we're on page 3, section 3.1, and we're talking about communication. So again, it gives you who to contact. You know, if you have questions, it lets you know what date to send them by. Um, we kind of talked about the pre-proposal conference already. All right. Section 3.2, um, it gives you, again, the time of when proposals should be received. So again, it's important to register as a document holder because it's subject to change. This entire document is subject to change. And our way of doing that is by issuing an addendum, okay? So make sure you are a registered document holder, okay? We've had proposals where, you know, we put the bid, let me give you an example. We put the bid out for one user department, okay? So we had a lot of questions come in and it was decided to change the scope to 30. Okay. If you didn't get that addendum, then you made your proposal on one department. Okay. You're not going to have a chance to redo those proposals over again. Okay. So again, that's why addendums are very important. All right. All right. So then it goes on further to tell you how many hard copies, how many originals, what's the format. how you should address the package. Again, we go back to the spec number being listed. All right, RFP information resources. Um, we'll talk about MBE, WBE a little further. All right, then it gives you a timetable. All right, when we issue it, when are your questions due? When are proposals due? Transparency website, trade secrets. Okay. So one thing it's important to remember is that you're dealing with a governmental agency. Okay? And because you're dealing with a governmental agency, um, some of the things you're asking or submitting to us may be for you a uh, trade secret, right? You may pasta this way and it's the best pasta ever and you got the secret ingredient well you're doing business with us and you want to make us aware of that you may want to say hey this is top secret I don't tell everybody my recipe okay um, so you have the opportunity to mark pages as confidential okay 
but again, is subject to the Freedom of Information Act, okay? And we're even at this point posting some of our responses online, okay? So you may provide a redacted copy. Um, so you mark those pages as confidential. Um, you can provide a redacted copy, but being, again, that is subject to Freedom of Information Act, you have to know that going in, you know. And, and again, everything can't be marked confidential, but that's just so you'll know, hey, I gave you my secrets and my formula, and you put it online, and you're dealing with a governmental agency, so you have to know it. You have to, if, you know, if you're concerned about that, study what the Freedom of Information Act is, you know, how it relates to you. It's, it's all part of it, all right? All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is preparing your proposals in the required information, okay? So what we do is we tell you, hey, we're asking for a proposal, and this is how you put it together, and this is what it should include, all right? So for format of the proposals, we tell you to put it on a certain size paper. We tell you how many copies, all right? So it's clearly laid out for you. All right, we tell you to section it in tabs. All right, so for this particular RFP, and note that this will change by RFP, okay? So what you have here today on this RFP is not necessarily going to be set in stone, okay? So I don't want you to think, well, all of them are going to have this, or all of them are not going to have that. Not true. Some of them may ask for less. Some of them may ask for more. This is just a general idea of kind of what you can expect, just, you know, so you'll be able to see. But you have to thoroughly read it through to make sure you give them everything they're asking for. And I'll talk about evaluation shortly, okay? So let's just go through this cover letter, okay? So again, cover letter. Now you may just think cover letter. Okay, it's a cover letter you know, put certain things in cover letters. But sometimes the things are so simple that sometimes they're overlooked, okay? So they're asking you for things like how, how long has this, you know, you've been in business? What's the legal name? The name and the telephone numbers of the people to contact, okay? So we've had proposals where we ask for people to put the name of the people to contact and it's missing. So if I needed to call you, how would I know who to talk to, okay? So again, sometimes it's in the subtle details in which we ask for these items, all right? Page seven, we go on to talk about the executive summary. Again, give us some concept that you understand what we're asking for, all right? Let's basically tell us again that you understand it. So that's why you're giving that executive summary here. Professional qualifications and specialized experience of the respondent and team members committed to this project. Again, so there are exhibits in this RFP. Um, some of those exhibits include your company profile information. So again, we're asking for information. Company references, all right? My advice for company references would be that if you're going to use an organization for a reference, that you tell them that you're going to use them. You make sure the information is current, okay? Very important. So there's a profile, which is exhibit four that you fill out and you put all of this information here. So the city's trying to ascertain your experience by your company references. Business license, authority to do business in Illinois. All right, we're asking you to provide copies of the appropriate license. Capacity to perform, all right? Do you have the capacity? Are you working for the county? Are you working for the state? Do you have lots of private clients? It's just you, it's, you know, everybody is at full capacity, you know? Can you handle um, a new client? You know, we're gonna look at all of those things. So, the, you know, as we're going through these, you can see how it's a little bit different from the competitive bid. Again, competitive bid, you know, is based on price, supply. This one, there's a lot more detail that's being looked at. Professional qualifications and specialized experience, 
All right, we're looking at resumes. What's the base location of the staff? All right, what is the role of that individual? All right. Project management and implementation plan. All right. What is your plan for these services? All right, and these things you put together things like an organizational chart. What are your dedicated resources? All right, there's a lot of thought that we're looking to go into these items to make sure that you understand and you're clearly proposing to us of these items all right so this one has a maintenance and support program all right uh, we're gonna hold all the questions to the end okay cost proposal all right so they provide you a cost proposal so it's actually in exhibit two so let's kind of flip over to exhibit two just so you'll see have exhibit one, one A, and all you're flipping through is actually the scope of services. I'll kind of go over that generally with you, all right? So you're submitting costs as it is outlined here. And a lot of times this is provided to you in an Excel spreadsheet and you're able to populate these numbers. But for these services, this is how you're gonna propose cost. So there's quite a few cost tables here, just so you'll see that. All right. NBE, WBE, Minority and Women Business Enterprise Commitments. Okay. Generally, most of our RSPs have an NBE and a WBE commitment goal, and they are per project. Okay. So this one has an NBE goal of 25% and a WBE goal of 5%, okay? So you may ask, what does that mean? Okay, so that means for this particular project, we're gonna ask that you work with um, firms to fulfill um, this participation goal um, of 25%. So 25% of this project potentially will go to a minority business enterprise and 5% will go to a women business enterprise. Okay. So where do I find these MBE, WBEs? We have a directory on our website. Okay. And they have all the different types of companies, the certification areas, um, they have you know, when the certification expires, they have all of that information for you. So what you actually submit with your proposal is what's known as a D1, and then the actual vendor submits a C1 form, okay? So let's look at this. I mean, I really want you to understand this. I know some, some of you may or may not be um, where you're ready to submit this at this point, but I really want you to understand this and just give you a really brief overview of this form. So let's see if this has a C1 and a D1. Okay, it does. Okay, good. All right. So this is exhibit five. Okay. And we are about... Ten or eleven pages in. So let me show you what you're looking for. It says C1 and it says D1. C1, D1. C1, D1. So exhibit five is at the end. Keep going. You're on exhibit two. Want to go to five. You're right there, you got it, all right?
Got it? Okay. It's close. You got it? All right. If anybody needs help, I'll come and help you, okay? So C1, D1. Got it. Need a little help, mom. It's it's in Exhibit Five. Looks like these are, here we go, yeah. Some of yours is a little bit further back. All right, you got it? See, hers may be a little different, let's see. No, hers is a little different, let me help you. I don't know, it's a little bit. There we go, all righty, we all got it? You got it? All righty, all right, C1, D1. All right, all right, so when you're filling out your proposals, the C1 will actually, you can fill this, the subcontractor will actually fill this out. All right, so this would be from you, whatever firm you are, so no, from the NBEWBE contractor to the prime contractor. So let's just say you're the prime, all right? You put the project name and the spec. And then you're going to put the types of services they will perform. And then the, it's being offered for this, this price in those terms of payment. All right? And then they want to see if the actual subcontractor will be subcontracting. Okay? And they're going to fill this out. All right? And then the D1, which is the next form over, is what you will actually be filling out. All right? And this is a comprehensive list of the M total plan for MBEs, WBEs, all right? You can have one, you can have 10, you can have five. As long as you're meeting that goal of 25 and five, it's up to you how you're going to uh, come up with your plan, okay? So you're putting name, address, contact person, the dollar value of the participation, and then the percentage, okay? Also, you want to make sure that they give you a copy of their current certification letter, okay? So you also want to make sure you have that, all right? So again, most of these RFPs are going to have that, so it's very important. So, you know, um, certification letter, make sure they're certified in the area that they tell you if they're supposed to clean carpet, make sure the letter says that they clean carpet. Okay, all right, so MBEWB. Again, you're probably gonna see this on every single RFP. Now, there are some of them that say no stated goals, okay? So then, you know, generally for those, you don't have to submit these documents, but make sure you read it. But for the ones that have these goals, that's what you're going to be looking at and filling out, okay? There's a whole attachment that talks about MBE and WBE. So um, it is a requirement that you're generally gonna have to fulfill very, very important because, again, for this, 30% of this project, 25% MBE and 5% WBE is going for that. All right, financial statements, all right? So for this, we're asking for um, financial statements, okay? So it, it says if you don't have audited financial statements, it tells you what type of alternate documentation can be submitted. Sometimes you're in an industry where it's not a requirement that 
your financial statements be audited. Okay? So in that case, again, we're not asking you to go out and get them audited, but we're saying in order to assess your financial uh, capabilities or how financially stable you are, this is what we're going to need to be able to do that. Okay, so a statement from your accountant saying, we're good, you know, uh, it's not going to be enough. Okay, you need these types of documents. All right, EDS. All right, again, you're dealing with a governmental agency. All right, so there's more disclosure. So we have, the good thing about this is we have an online system. We used to have paper, and you go through the system and you're asking, you're filling out a lot of questions, you know. Um, has the business, I think you talk about bankruptcy, I think you talk about slavery, you talk about who the owners are. So sometimes this is a little touchy because some companies don't want to disclose who the owners are what percentage they own. You know, but you're going to have to disclose that information. And then if the owner owns in excess of 7.5% and it's an entity, they're going to have to disclose their owners. Okay? So we go all the way up the tree to find out who the owners are. And again, keep in mind, public entity, a governmental organization, some of this information will be posted online. Okay, so if there's a big red flag for you regarding that, um, just know that that's going to have to be disclosed. There are also some exceptions, and that's on our website as to what those exceptions are, but generally, you know, this is the information that you'll have. So what happens is you go to this website, you walk through, you answer all these questions, and at the end, they give you this lovely certificate you filed, all right? And so you attach that, and you put that in your nice proposal per package that you're preparing with all of this stuff. Okay, so again, I recommend you organize it. We're asking for number one, number two, the tab at number eight. These are the financials. This is the EDS. This is the cost. This is my MBE, WBE plan. All right, we're on page 13, and we're talking about legal actions. All right, so now we're going getting into the legality, okay? We, give, we ask you to provide a listing and brief description of material legal actions, okay? So you get into the concept of materiality, um, but again, we're asking for material legal actions. So if this is something that you don't know, maybe your attorney can put this part together, but again, we would ask that you would address these items, okay? So we note that it just says, respondent or any division, subsidiary, or parent entity of respondent. Okay, so note that it talks about all of those individual um, parties. All right, insurance. All right, insurance is our exhibit seven. Okay, so this thing was kind of out of order a little bit, so I don't want to have you flopping all over the place. But this is what I'll say about insurance. Look at the requirements, okay? Sometimes requirements, you know, let's just say you're in business. Um, for your type of business, you only have to have general liability of a million. You only have to have general liability of two million. Well, the city may ask you to have general liability of four million. They may ask you to have general liability of six million, okay? We're not requesting that at the time that you submit the proposal that you go out and buy a $4 million policy, if that's what we ask you for. We're saying talk to your agent, see how much that costs, and see if you have the um, ability or if that's something you want to do, okay? Because we've had um, some respondents say, um, hey, they want to charge me too much to buy this extra insurance, and I don't think I could do it. So then you should be making that determination now, okay? Don't wait if you're selected and say it's too much, because if you're selected, we're going to look for you to immediately produce a certificate of insurance 
with all of these coverages. So again, it's important to read the insurance requirements to make sure that you know what is all involved with your agent and whatever costs there may be associated with that because we're going to ask you to produce that certificate. All right. The next thing we'll talk about is the evaluation of the proposals. Okay. So as the, on the bottom of page 13 to the top of 14, we talk about evaluation phases. Okay, I'll give you a very general overview of what this means. All right. So in phase one, it looks like we asked you for 11 items. All right. I'm looking at number 11 makes number 11 is insurance that makes 11 items or different sections. Now each section may have had their own different tabs. We're asking for 11 sections here. So phase one is where you're just going to go through. There's going to be an evaluation committee, okay? So it tells you that this evaluation committee is going to have representatives from the Department of Innovation and Technology, Department of Public Health, Department of Procurement, and it could include other departments. And it's saying, hey, you're going to have a committee. You asked for eight proposals. You may distribute it to eight individuals. This is actually a committee that's going to be formed, all right? So what's going to happen in phase one is that we will take these stacks of proposals that we have, and we will simply create a checklist and say we ask for 11 items. Do they have 11? That's the only thing that's done in phase one. All right, here's the great part of this. If you provided 11 items, you are good to go to phase two, all right? Here's the not so good part of it. If you do not, the, there is a likelihood that you cannot go on to phase two, okay? And what that means is no matter how great your product or service is, we're not really doing a thorough review in phase one to determine that. So we won't know that this is the best recipe that this is the best plan okay so if I could give you any advice at all is to give yourself an opportunity to at least have your proposal evaluated missing items um, taking big risk okay I've seen lots and lots of proposals that go in this non-responsive pile and again if this is something you are very interested in, and this could be for seven years, then for something such as missing items, you can miss this opportunity. So again, if they ask for it, put it in there. If for some reason you don't have it or whatever the statement, acknowledge it, let them know you read it, and this is your way of addressing it. All right, so that's phase one. Phase two is a more thorough review of what you actually submitted, okay? So now you're looking through those 11 items. You're looking through the legal actions. You're looking through the insurance. You're looking through the resumes. You're looking at the cost. You're looking at the MBE, WBE. You're looking at all that stuff they asked you for, all right? That's phase two, all right? Another good thing is that we outline what you're going to be evaluated on. And we, it, this starts at the bottom of page 14. So you do not have to guess, right? It doesn't tell you the weight, but it tells you what you're going to be evaluated on. Professional and technical competence, all right? Professional qualifications, your past and current performance. Again, we ask for resumes, all right? All right, so your local availability of your key staff, the quality of your plan, your cost proposal, your MBE, WBE plan, legal actions, your financial stability, your compliance with laws, degree to which you accept the city terms and conditions. So generally, sometimes the terms and conditions are attached to the RFP, and sometimes um, you'll have to download them or click on a link. But again, you're able to see the city's terms and conditions that you'll have to agree to. Review them. Um, have an attorney to review them. So again, you're able to know that. They generally ask that you list any exceptions that you have. So you're going to be listing those out, all right? Are there any potential conflicts of interest? All right, this is where you would 
that the, that would be highlighted. Right? So now we talk about a potential phase three. All right? Phase three could include oral presentations or a site visit. All right? So the good thing is that if you're contacted in phase three for an oral presentation or a site visit, A, you know where we are in the process, but secondly, this means that you've pretty much made a short list, okay, which is great. All right? So they may ask you and your team to come in and present. You may have to stand before an evaluation committee and ask a lot of questions. You know, they may ask you to do a demonstration of software, um, a lot of different things. They may actually come to you to visit you know, your warehouse or whatever it is. All right. And from there, a recommendation would be made as to who to move further with. All right. And then they will ask you to potentially participate in negotiations. All right. So that's the RFP process. You know, that's the selection process. All right. So we're on page 17, where I kind of talked to you about the addenda. All right. Kind of mentioned that a little bit earlier. You know, when we want to officially change a solicitation, we'll issue an addendum. Okay, it's just as important as the RFP. All right, the city has the right to reject proposals. Okay, so we could actually cancel an RFP. All right, we can put it out. Things could change, direction of that office, of that um, commissioner, and they decide they want to go in a different direction. So they could potentially cancel that RFP. All right, so we're saying there is no liability for those. So um, we kind of went through generally this RFP and all these exhibits, but I thought it would be more helpful uh, for you to actually see. So I just want to, we've hit most of these points. All right, so there are some tips here for um, preparing RFP proposal. So it may be of some of the stuff I already talked about. So read the entire RFP document, follow proposal format and content, no shortcuts. All right, good one here is don't assume the city knows your firm. So we have some organizations that respond to multiple RFPs and somehow some respondents think we, we have a repository of information and we don't, okay? Assume we know nothing. If you're responding to a particular RFP, they're separate, they're not the same. There's no repository, okay? I could be working on one. Joe did this one. He could be working on something else. We're not going to talk and say, hey, did you get the financials? No, did you get the financials? We're not going to do that, okay? So they ask for it. Make sure you submit it, all right? Submit all questions about the RFP in writing, all right? Addendum will be issued to all RFP document holders on file. Be responsive to the RFP, submit all requirements, submit all required information and documents, submit cost proposal in the format provided for equitable comparisons. Be a responsible bidder. Verify your company has the ability and the capacity to perform your proposal. All right. If a mandatory requirement, avoid taking exceptions to the requirement, it will result in proposal rejection. So there are additional tips. Exhibit forms, which must be completed as part of proposal submission, will vary depending on the RFP, and you want to follow. And then it talks about some of the forms that are universal, like the company profile, the references, the MBEWBE plan. Um, you do have the ability to ask for a waiver, all right? EDS insurance, all right? Review the standard terms and conditions. Re verify the existence of any addendums. We talked about that. Submit proposals on time. All right. Late proposals could be rejected. All right. So you could do all this nice packaging and you're all excited and then you can come late. And we've heard every excuse in the book. So take a risk. All right. 
Cover letter must be signed by an authorized officer and include any required deposits. Sometimes there are deposits or fees. I think it's in excess of like millions of dollars if that was the bid is for, but please note that some of them have a deposit. Not all of them, but some of them. Acknowledging the addendum in the cover letter. Pay attention to the RFP instructions. Submit one page EDS filing. All right, make a checklist. So kind of like I talked about before, 11 items. Make sure you got 11. All right. Respondent, respondents to the RFP are posted online. So again, your, your whole proposal could be posted online. All right, all subject to freedom of information. We talked about the three phases. All right, so at the end of the process, what happens is you get a nice letter. All right, that letter could say, you have been selected. All right, or it could say, unfortunately, you know, we have selected someone else. All right, but we encourage you to respond to future RFPs. So my advice to you, and this would be to any of you, is if you are not selected for some reason, ask for a debriefing, okay? This is your opportunity to come in and find out why you were not selected, okay? It could have been required content. It could have been anything, but this is your chance to sit down one-on-one -on -one with a, you know, a city person, if it's for the city, and I'm, they may have these with other municipalities as well, but it gives you an opportunity, it doesn't cost anything, okay? But it gives an opportunity for you to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction to find out why your proposal was not selected. Again, very, very valuable resource for any of you, okay? So that way, you know, if you wanna do this again, you wanna go to for a different project, you wanna go for a different municipality, you know why, you're not wondering, like you got a selection, you know, a declination letter, you know, and you're saying, I want to know why I wasn't selected. This is your opportunity. Okay. All right. So contract award is contingent on upon successful negotiations of terms and pricing. So again, we talked about negotiation a little earlier. You know, we're, just because you were selected, you got a lot of selection. Oh, this is so great. All right. Here's an additional thing that is contingent upon successful negotiation. Okay, so they may ask you to lower your price, all right? They may ask you to change some of the terms. So just kind of be aware of this, that it's not really awarded until it's awarded, all right? Um, RFP may allow for multiple awards, all right? There are some RFPs that have different categories. So you may be selecting one, ca one respondent for this category, another respondent for another category, just so you'll know, okay? So the RFP will clearly lay that out. All right, so what we're going to do now is allow the opportunity to ask questions. So again, this format has changed a little, so what they're asking is that you write it down, all right? And because this is being streamed live, you know, they want to make sure that I am repeating the question so everybody hears the question. I'll read it aloud, and I'll try to answer that question for you. In the event that I'm not able to answer this question for you or we need further resources, then I can take that from you and make sure someone from the department gets back to you, okay? But I'll give you the opportunity at this point to write down any questions that you may have. You came all the way here. So this is your opportunity to ask a few questions. And again, some of you may be in different stages of where you are in business development. Again, if you're not ready to take on the role as a prime contractor, again, I encourage you to potentially be a subcontractor. Um, if, you are, if you're an MBE or a minority business enterprise or a woman-owned business enterprise, then maybe you can look into our certification. Okay, and that could be a window for you to get on some of these contracts so you can start participating. Okay, so again, if you can't do prime, don't give up, all right? Get, go on as a sub, all right? This is definitely an opportunity for you to do business with the city, all right? 
So if there are any questions, I, I'll take that. And while you guys are writing, um, I will read this question. So the first one said, is 5% the minimum WBE requirement? Well, this is going to be project specific, okay? So what that means is some of these projects may not have any WBE goals, all right? Some of them may have 15. So what happens is at the beginning of this project, the department and procurement will kind of sit down to see what's reasonable and attainable for this project, all right? Some of them actually say no stated goals, which means that for that project, there aren't any goals identified but a lot of them have some type of um, goal associated with them. So when we say 5%, it's for this one, and it is the minimum for the WBE. And while I was talking, I just thought of something. If you're looking to fulfill the MBE WBE requirement and somebody gives you a letter and says they're certified in both, you can only use that letter for one of the goals, not both, okay? So um, some people say, okay, it's 30%, 25 and five, that makes 30, okay? But that company, you can only use them for one, all right? Now, if you're certified yourself and you want to utilize yourself for that, then um, you can use yourself for one and then use somebody else for the other goal, all right? Um, earlier when we first started, we talked about target market, all right? So target market is where they're going to put these RFPs out, but only for certified MBEs and WBEs, all right? They're targeting a market, all right? So you may see a regular RFP, you know, we're working on one now for real estate, property management, okay? So you're gonna have, we may issue one for a regular, um, to the regular non-target market, and then we're just gonna issue one to target market. So only firms, that are certified are gonna be able to respond to target market. So that way, when the city is looking to utilize services for um, to, to certain, certain services, let's take property management, they're gonna to go to that RFP, they're gonna put that RFP out, and only those companies that are MBE, WBE are gonna be able to respond to that um, target market. And they have to be certified in the area of which the services are for. Let's say we did one for let's say travel management, okay? So we put it out, we wanna hire a trial, travel management company. We're saying this is target market. So this is great for those firms that are MBE, WBE, because we can utilize that for those services. All right, so does RFP apply to primes only? No. Again, if you are not able at this time to um, apply as a prime, try to be a sub, okay? If you're MBE, WBE, try to get your certification. Um, you don't necessarily have to be certified, uh, MBE, WBE certified to, to go on as a subcontractor, but they get credit for you if you're certified, okay? So everybody, you know, everybody's not in a position to be a prime at this time, but you still want to do governmental business Go on as a subcontractor, get your feet wet, find out about the process, see how it works, offer you your services, you know, and then they're able to, you're able to grow to the point of where you could potentially be a prime, okay? So um, don't give up if you're not ready to be a prime, all right? So how, how to register as a document holder, okay? So... When you register as a document holder, basically what you'll do is you'll contact this room. I think you have to, it's on one of these pages, and you just basically give them a, your, either fax them or email them your business card. But it's, it's for that specific project. You gotta remember, there's no general list, okay? So it's for that project, all right? So when you give them your card, they're saying, okay, spec number 113885, you know, she sent me her card, and I'm gonna write that she has a copy of this RFP. There's no general list, okay? So you're registering for that specific project, okay? Very important. We don't have any general standard list or anything like that, all right? Some people call and say, how do I get on this list? It's not a list, okay? Now there's a dif difference when you become an actual vendor, 
we may have vendor lists, but you went through a process to get that way. All right. So the next question says, can I get a list of prime bidders or who has proposals? All right. So again, we're talking about project specific. All right. So the information is online. So the first thing you're able to find out is who took a, out a copy of it. All right. So you go to our website and there's a where you put it there's a little box where you put in the spec number and it'll tell you who took out a copy of that spec all right so that's the first thing um, in order to be transparent most of our contracts are posted online okay so my here's a bit of advice all right so let's say we talk about this RFP and you're interested in um, knowing who the current bidder is what their contract is, how much they pay. Here's a good bit of information. If you can attend the pre-bid conference, do so. And you can just ask at the pre-bid, all right? So in those list of questions, it'll be who is the current vendor, you know, maybe what is their contract number, and most of the times you can just go online and download it, okay? Uh, another thing is that you can do keyword searches. Let's just say you do carpet cleaning. All right, you generally can go on our website, type in carpet cleaning, and all the carpet cleaning contracts will come up. All right. So again, we're very transparent. All right, you're able to see who the company is. You're generally able to see their prices. You know, all of that information. So, number of ways to uh, gather that information. All right. Do we have any additional questions? Okay, so let me see if I can read this right now. Let me see. <laughs> All right, so the certificate of insurance doesn't have to be presented at time of proposal response, correct? All right, so you're, sometimes you just have to write that you um, are able to obtain it. Okay, so again, we don't want you to go out and spend money. All right, because let's say the requirements for general liability is $2 million. Okay, well let's say in your day-to-day -day business, you're only required to have one million, all right? So if you go to your agent and say you want to increase it to two million, they're probably going to tell you, hey, that's an additional X amount of dollars. So you don't even know if you have the contract or not. So we would not definitely not ask you to go out and spend that money, but we will ask you to have a conversation with your agent so you'll know if you were to move forward how much it would cost you, and you would you can make the determination from there whether or not you want to move forward with the city as far as putting in this proposal. Um, some people, it, it may be enough. It, you know, they don't want to pay an extra whatever it could cost for insurance. Okay, so don't go out and buy it, but have the discussions. All right, contract acceptance. Um, at time of RP response we are able to list exceptions to the general city contract. Would this possibly be adverse to make exceptions to the contract? Great question, okay. So, A, it is part of the evaluation criteria, okay. You are evaluated on the degree to which you accept the city's standard terms and conditions, okay. Sometimes you can't help it. Okay. Sometimes you just don't agree with all the terms and conditions, and it's not something you can accept, um, and you'd like to discuss those further. So this is your opportunity to list that. Okay. So it is an evaluation criteria, but some companies, you know, we just can't accept those. All right. So that's what negotiation is for. But you are evaluated based on that. Okay. So make sure you read them, get a copy of them. You know, have your attorney review them because we're going to look for you to sign that contract. All right? Are the instructions, oh, wait, are there instances that teaming is suggested outside of a list of a certified agency list? Provide suggestions to team. All right, can you tell me what that means a little bit? Do 
generally no, because the respondent is the respondent, right? If you're submitting as organization A and this is your plan, all right, we're not going to say, well, if you put A and B together, then that'll make one whole. We're going to say, hey, A presented as A and B presented as B. Now, we're not going to stop you from behind the scenes working together to, to you know, again, if you're going to the pre-bid conference, you know, we provide the names of the organizations that showed up. We would encourage you to say, hey, maybe I do part A and you do part B and we submit this together. So when we look at it, it's already cohesive. But we're not going to take the step and um, actually try to partner you and things of that nature. No, we're not. So we would encourage you to do that, absolutely. Are the financials required from the sub as well as the prime um, at time of RFP? No. No. All right. Now, the exception to this, I'm going to say generally no, the exception to this is it's also going to depend on when you're defining your team, how much of an integral part that subcontractor is, okay? If that sub is doing a large majority of the work, all right, and they're part of the team and you're providing their um, resumes, um, then you may want to provide that information. I wanted to try to point out that key point, um, page seven, all right, under number three, all right. Um, if Respondent proposes that major portions of the work will be performed by team member, different team members, i.e. joint venture partners, subcontractors, et cetera. Respondent must provide the required information as described below for each such team member. So again, it's going to depend on what you're actually having that sub to do. But generally, the answer is no. But some people are having a sub to do a whole lot, OK? All right, are the scope reviewed on lowest bidder? No, so again, this goes for commodities, and remember in the beginning we talked about the difference between competitive bidding, bidding and RFP. For RFP, it's gonna be based on those 11 items and all of those evaluation criteria, so no. Price is only one consideration, okay? So you're looking at resumes, your plan, you know, you're looking at all of that. All right. Explain the vendor list process. Okay. So we don't have a general vendor list. Okay. There's no vendor, general vendor list. Now we do have processes um, of, we have other procurement methods, um, things called RFQs, and I don't want to go too far off because, again, we could have a whole workshop on those. But we have certain procurements where we do something called, a, it could be a request for proposal, but generally, it's a request for qualifications. And for those, we'll pre-qualify a list of vendors. And so when we look for services, then we'll look to that pre-qualified pool, OK? But generally, there is not, but it'll be through this type of process, OK? It'll say request for qualifications. And it says we're looking to pre-qualify a vendor pool, OK? But generally, through RFP, um, we don't have a lot of lists. And if it is, it's going to describe how we get to this list through an RFP process. Okay, so again, there's a difference between something called an RFP and an RFQ. All right, we're looking, and for RFQ, it's a qualified list of vendors. RFP, a lot of times we're looking for one vendor, possibly. All right, so there's no list with that. All right, so the only list we talked about again was when you register with the bid and bond room that you have a copy of the RFP, that's a list. Um, you're going to be on a list of who attended the pre-proposal conference, that's a list and that's public. But in general, there's no just pre-qualified list of parties that have contracts with the city. You can go to our website and find out, um, get copies of contracts and things of that nature, but there's no kind of big list. Are there any additional questions? All right. So we definitely want to thank you for coming out. So again, we're streaming live, so this can be uh, found on YouTube. 
All right. the rest of your day.